morning. This is uh, Pastor Durham live with uh, the Sunday School this morning. And uh, we are glad to be here with you. Let us go uh, to God in a word of prayer, knowing that uh, God is able to do anything but fail. Uh, Father, this morning we bless and we thank you for being such an awesome God. And we pray even now, God, that as your word goes forth, God, that it goes forth with clarity and with understanding. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, uh, this morning um, our Sunday school lesson is coming to us from uh, the book of Genesis chapter 32 where we read of Jacob wrestling uh, with the angel. And uh, Jacob refused to let the angel go until he blessed him. I believe there's a lesson in that for all of us this morning, uh, but uh, let's go quickly to the Word of God in uh, Genesis chapter 32 and beginning with uh, verse number 24. And uh, Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until daybreak, breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And, and he said, Jacob. And he saw that... And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and man, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou do ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he uh, halted upon his knee. Well, this morning, I, I, I want to talk to you uh, simply from the subject, Hold On to the Promises of God. Now, God has made a lot of promises to us. There are over 8,000 uh, promises in the Word of God. And uh, those promises are to you and I. And oftentimes, we don't take advantage of all of the benefits that we have, uh, rather it's with God or in this present life. Oftentimes on our job, the benefits that we never take advantage of. Well, uh, a a as we look at Jacob, uh, Jacob was a very uh, aggressive young man. Uh, that uh, he he knew that the blessings and the favor of God was on his life. And, and now, like a lot of us, sometimes we try to get ahead of God. And when we try to get ahead of God, it, it puts us uh, in trouble with God. And, and, and so this morning, I want to encourage you not to get ahead of God. But to stay on track, God knows what he's doing with your life. Well, as we dive into the Sunday School lesson this morning, 
I, I want to start out with a story of uh, a uh, airline uh, that was flying from one destination to the other with the pilot and the co-pilot. Uh, after taking off, they heard a noise. Uh, it was an unfamiliar noise uh, that they had not heard before, uh, but it, it didn't cause any uh, problems, and and they had dipped the check off, and everything was supposed to be secure. And so after flying, uh, they uh, uh, were, were descending up, and, and they heard this noise, again and so the pilot decided that he was going to go and investigate and when he left his familiar place uh, he he went and discovered that there was a door uh, that was not properly secured and uh, as he was going in that area, uh, the door opened and the wind sucked him out of the plane. Well, when the door opened, then uh, the alarm went off on the instrument panel and the, the co-pilot automatically uh, knew that the pilot had been sucked out of the plane and he called and reported it and said, uh, to headquarters that uh, can you dispatch some helicopters uh, because we're over a body of water uh, and see if we can rescue the pilot. And uh, the co-pilot asked for permission uh, to make an emergency landing uh, because he was not going to be able to make it to the destination, the planned destination, because of this, uh, what he thought was a tragedy. And, uh, and so after landing and all of the uh, paramedics and the emergency people came uh, to, um, to the plane, uh, to their surprise, a miracle had taken place. Uh, it was uh, 10 minutes where the plane was hovering around uh, 4,000 uh, feet up in the air, uh, and, and yet while the pilot was falling to his death, the pilot seen the ladder that was on the plane, and he grabbed on to the ladder. And upon grabbing onto the ladder, he uh, grabbed onto it, and he remained alive. Now, 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 this is a miracle all in itself because to be 4,000 feet up in the air and you're still able to breathe, you, 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 you're not passing out. Uh, so here it is, 4,000 feet up in the air. He's, he's, he's uh, holding on for dear life and just several feet to the ground he he, he almost uh, was knocked in the head uh, by uh, the plane descending but he managed to escape that as well and uh, when the plane finally landed to everybody's surprise uh, there was a miracle because the pilot did not fall in the water as they thought. But the pilot had grabbed on uh, to the ladder of the plane and he was holding on for dear life. Now, they said that he had gripped uh, the ladder so hard that it, it took them a while to pry his hands off of the ladder. Well, you, you know, as I think about Jacob in our story this morning, that, 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 that Jacob knew that the blessings of the Lord was on his life. 
And I, I, I believe God is talking to somebody this morning. And I want to remind you that the blessings of the Lord are on your life as well. But 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 now while Jacob was wrestling with his angel, he wrestled all night long. Somebody needs to get that 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 your blessings don't just fall into your lap. But you've got to wrestle, you've got to struggle, you you've got to persevere if you want the blessings of God. And, and and so as Jacob wrestled all night long, he 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 and then no doubt he was tired. No, he maybe he he was frustrated. He was ready to give up, but 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 he kept on because he knew that God had promised him a blessing. Not only did he promise it to him, if you'll uh, look at the history, uh, the promise started with Abraham and, and then Isaac, and, and now Jacob is in line to receive the promise. Now, what he said uh, to Abraham was that I, not only am I going to bless you, but I'm going to bless your descendants. He, he says that you're going to be blessed in such a way that it, it's like trying to count uh, sand. And, and, and how many know that it's impossible to count the grains of sand? God said, that's the way I'm going to bless you. And so as Jacob is wrestling with this angel, uh, 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 maybe he was ready to give up, but, 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 but Jacob said that God has made me a promise. And, and, and as he wrestles, as he struggles, as he goes through with this angel, the angel looks up and says, wait a minute, it, it's almost daybreak, uh, turn me loose. But Jacob said, I'm not going to turn you loose until you bless me. And, 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 and the angel was ready uh, to go, but, but, but Jacob refused. And I need to ask you now, how bad do you want your blessing? And, and, and so as Jacob wrestled with this angel, uh, God knows that a lot of times the way to get our attention is to inflict pain. Well, the angel touched the hollow of his thigh. No doubt that was painful. But, but Jacob, like the pilot, was still holding on. Uh, he, he had gripped him and said, I, I'm not going to turn you loose. And uh, he, he wrestled and he wrestled. And, and then finally, the angel blessed him. But be, before, uh, Jacob was a curious man. And, and, and Jacob uh, uh, said to the angel, what is thy name? Or oh, excuse me, the angel said to Jacob, what is your name? Jacob told him, my name is Jacob. Well, well, why did the angel ask him that? Well, because if you really want to be blessed of God, you've got to come clean with God. And, and, and when Jacob came clean with God. He said, my name is Jacob. Because Jacob meant that he came on the hills. Jacob also meant that he was a deceiver. He was a trickster. And, but, but he came clean with God. And when he came clean, the Bible said that the angel said to him, thy name will no longer be called Jacob. But thy name shall be called Israel, a prince that will have power not only with God, but with man. In other words, you're going to have favor. He said, because you have prevailed. And what I want to tell you this morning uh, through this Sunday school lesson, looking at the life and the character of Jacob, is that you've got to prevail. Uh, that, 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 that even though there were some bumps, there were some bruises, uh, there was some pain, there was some discouragement, Jacob held on until he got the blessing. Uh, well, this morning, I want to tell you, 
I don't care what kind of bad news you've heard. Hold on to the promises of God. If you hold on to the promises of God, God will unfold those blessings unto you. Now, now, no doubt Jacob was all excited that, that God had blessed him. But, but how many knows that when God blesses you, he leaves a mark on you? But, but because the Bible says that after the angel blessed him, uh, that, 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 that Jacob thigh was, uh, uh, you, you know, he, he, he kind of walked now with a limp. But but that that lip uh, was showing the anointing of God on his life, and, and so this morning I, I want to say to you uh, that 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 when God blesses you, there's a mark on your life. Now there's no need to be discouraged. That that there's no need to be ashamed because the mark is the favor of God. And Jacob was able to prevail. And now after all of this fellowship with God, uh, Jacob was excited, he said, because, uh, it, you know, I, I've, I've been face to face with God. And God has blessed me. But how many know that after the blessing, uh, that, that, that there's always a storm? And, and so in, in our lesson our, our, our text tells us that 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 uh, the very uh, it, it, it wasn't long after that that uh, Jacob sees his brother Esau, you know the one that he stole the birthright from. Uh, he, he said that he sees him uh, along with four hundred men. Jacob, like many of us today, begins to question himself. And he says, now, did I go through all of this and, and, and now my life is going to be taken from me? Did, did I wrestle with God for naught? Did I go through and, 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 and now here it is, my brother who I've stolen from, who actually has the right to take my life because I stole everything from him. I stole the blessing. I stole the birthright. He, he has a right to be upset with me. But remember, Jacob, remember my brothers and sisters in Christ, that, that the prompt when God blesses you, the Bible says that he has no sorrow. And so Jacob's heart was gripped with fear, not knowing what to do, but uh, as I always say here at the Better Way Apostolic Church, that fear, uh, the, the acronyms, fear erases all rewards. See, if you allow fear to grip you, then you'll never know what the promise and the blessings of God are for your life. And, and, and so Jacob began to pray in his distress. Jacob began to pray in his moment of fear. And, 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 and he came to the conclusion the best way to handle this is to humble myself. And so Jacob walks up and he bows down seven times to his brother because he just knew that he was going to take him out, but, but, but he didn't. He was glad to see him, and, and he understood that, that, that God not only had blessed Jacob, but he had blessed him also, so he wasn't holding uh, any grudges. See, you, 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 you know, when, when we do things God's way, God will bless us. Uh, again, he promised him all of these blessings, and he said unto him, he, he, he says, you know, I'm not like a man that, 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 that when I uh, make a promise, he said that I hold 
to what I say. I hold to every promise. And, 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 and so what, what Jacob thought was going to turn out to be something bad, it, it actually turned out to be something good. Well, l- let me tell you that God will bless those who seek after him. <coughs> Excuse me. So it, it was in those moments that when Jacob began to seek God, that that God gave him a plan. And I, I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, don't panic in the situation. E- even though uh, it, it may not look like it's going to work out for you, begin to seek the Lord. Now, Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. He says, And all these other things shall be added unto you. So when you put God first in your situation, when you put God first in your life, you don't have to worry about it. That 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 that, that even though you may feel like you are alone, I want to reassure you that you are not alone in this battle. That God is with you. And 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 God is not going to let you fall if you listen to him. If you seek him, he'll lead you. He'll guide you. He will direct you. Well, when uh, Jacob faced his fear, which was Esau, it was then and then only that he could move on his journey. And I want to say to you today that you've got to learn to face your fears. You've got to learn to face your your enemies. You, you you see, when you face your enemies, oftentimes it's your enemies who point out your faults. Be, because many times those that love you, uh, they don't want to hurt your feelings. And, and, and so take heed to, to, to what your uh, your, your enemies are saying, uh, do a self-evaluation. Check yourself out. And, and if what they're pointing out is right, be like Jacob, seek God. You, you, you know, if, if we would listen to God, th- then God would help us to see our own shortcomings. Now, the Bible says, now unto him that is able to keep you. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask to think. God can keep you in every situation. God can keep you uh, in the midst of all of the negative things that are going to occur. Because blessings do not come without opposition. Blessings do not come without sorrow. Now, many times people look at your life and, and, and they say, I want to be like you, but they don't know your story. Now, now everything that God allows you to go through as a believer uh, is building your testimony to, to, to talk and walk with authority and with boldness. Now, can you imagine the pilot? Uh, his name was Mr. Dempsey. That, that that he had a powerful testimony in the end because he was able uh, to hold on to the ladder, to grip it so tightly, that the, and that he didn't pass out uh, being 4,000 feet up in the atmosphere. Uh, he had a few bumps and bruises, but he still had life. And so sometimes you get some bumps, some bruises, some scars. Look at your neighbor and tell him, but I'm still here. And, and you know, if you're still here, it means God has something more for you to do. But I want to encourage you to not get ahead of God. Now, after Jacob faced his fears, the Bible says that now he could continue 
on his journey. He could hold to the promises of God and the plan that God had for his life. Because fear can distract us. Fear can keep us from moving forward. But the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear. But he's given us peace and a sound mind. Well, preacher, what do you mean a sound mind? Well, a sound mind means that I'm walking in the principles of the word of God. I'm being led and I'm being guided by God. It doesn't matter how many potholes are on the road. It doesn't matter how many detour signs that are there. It doesn't matter how many road signs that are up that says that the road is uneven. I'm being led by God. Not forced, but led by God. And, and, and so this morning, if that's you, God has whispered in your ear. God has unfolded to you that he has a plan and a purpose for your life. Then I want you to hold on to the promises of God. Now, you, you know, holding on to the promises of God means to, to grip them just like this pilot did in our story. Just like uh, Jacob did. Can you imagine the excruciating pain that he had to be in? But, 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 but Jacob says, I've come too far to let defeat have the last word. That's got to be your testimony this morning that you, you've come too far to let defeat have the last word. Now, if you know God is speaking to your heart, you know God is saying something great, I, I, I want to take this time and opportunity to tell you that uh, that your, your past does not determine your future. God determines your future. And if you really want to be blessed and have access to all of the promises that God has for your life, I invite you to give your life and your heart to God. Now, his plan is simple. He tells us to repent of our sins, to be baptized in water in Jesus' name, and then God says, I want to fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost is a promise too. Salvation is a promise. That, that, that Jesus died for our sins. Not only did he die, but he got up. And, and, and now there are many people that worship many things uh, that they call God. But let me tell you, there's only one God that died and got up. And, and so if you are wise, then you would worship the almighty God and his name is Jesus. He died, but in three days he got up. And because he got up and declared that all power in heaven and earth has been given to him, now he wants to share that power and anointing with you to change your life, to step out of darkness into the light. Now, if that's you, I want to take this moment to invite you to come and be with us uh, every Sunday morning at the Better Way Apostolic Church, 1011 South Boeing Road, Arlington, Texas, 76013. Now, we're here in person every Sunday morning at 11 a.m., and there's a seat that's reserved for you. There's a promise that you need access to. Allow us the opportunity to help you to uh, get connected to the promises that God has for you. This is our prayer uh, that you too would uh, take advantage of everything that God has in store for you. Now, uh, don't be swayed uh, by the distractions. It ought to be a greater determination. And, and so uh, call us or, uh, uh, or 
Check us out here on the Facebook Live uh, every Sunday at 11 a.m., but our morning worship starts at 11 a.m. God bless you as our prayer until we meet again in Jesus' name. Amen.